Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Horror Mine. My name is Vic Shai, and this is The Scare Score, where I break down horror movies and rate them on how scary I think they are. In this episode, I'll be going over the 2014 Japanese reboot horror film, Juon, The Beginning of the End. That's right, my friends, the title says it all. This is the 10th film in the Juon franchise, and we only have one more film to cover after this one. Not counting the crossover film Sadako vs. Kayako, which yes, I promise I'll get to very soon. Juon, The Beginning of the End retells the tragic story of the terrifying cursed house and focuses on Toshio as the main antagonist. Kayako is no longer portrayed by actress Takako Fuji, whom along with creator Takashi Shimizu left the franchise in 2006 after The Grudge 2. Her portrayal of Kayako was by far the scariest and most unique aspect of the earlier Juon films, something that the newer installments have never quite managed to recapture. But, as promised, I'll be going over the events that take place throughout the film while our trusty scare score percentage goes up based on how effective the movie's scares are or attempt to be. With a shift in focus on Toshio as the main villain, saying that the reboot franchise suffers as a result is a huge understatement. But how scary is it? Sit back and relax and join me as we explore Juon, the beginning of the end, and tally up the scare score. Our reboot begins with the reused text which tells us that a curse is born when someone dies with a strong hatred in their heart. It remains in that place of death and those who encounter it die and a new curse is born. We then get a found footage style sequence of a CPS worker and police officer entering the reimagined cursed house looking for Toshio. The inside of the house looks just as we all expected, confirming the presence of a Juan. They find Toshio's dead body inside of an upstairs closet, of which I I won't show or describe because of, um, <clears throat> recent events. We see the ghost of Toshio behind the cameraman before suddenly appearing right in front of him. <laughs> Right away, this scene had a lot of potential. They set up the creepy atmosphere pretty well and we knew that they were doomed the moment they stepped inside the house. However, the scene was ruined with the overly dramatic appearance by Toshio and the odd choice to briefly switch away from the found footage perspective. I actually think that a found footage Juan film would be a great idea. The first chapter titled Yui follows a substitute teacher who is assigned to her own classroom after the homeroom teacher suddenly quit. She then calls her boyfriend Naoto to tell him about the good news. She notices a weird spiral pattern drawn in the sand and we get some pretty creepy music that leads us into the title sequence. On her first day of class, she notices the absence of a boy named Toshio Saeki who hasn't shown up to school for an entire week. She tries to call the Saeki household but doesn't get an answer. She reads the notes of the previous teacher, Mr. Konishi, who last wrote that he was going to visit the house. One day, she notices the same spiral pattern scratched onto Toshio's desk. The next chapter is titled Nanami and follows four schoolgirls that venture into the Saeki house. Nanami, Aoi, Rina, and Yayoi, portrayed by actress Yuina Kuroshima, who would later portray Haruka Hanjo in Netflix's Juon Origins. Aoi's sister is the real estate agent in charge of the cursed house, which is how the girls gain access. Nanami is clearly uncomfortable with what they're doing, but is peer pressured by the quote unquote cool and popular girls to go inside the house. After having seen every single Juon and Grudge film, I can confidently say that the second deadliest thing next to the curse is high school peer pressure. One change that fans will notice is how different the cursed house looks in this film. Just like one of the girls says, it looks just like a normal house. The house is filled with light and you can even hear the birds chirping outside. Now this would actually be a pretty clever way to trick viewers into a false sense of security, which could lead to a very effective scare. Spoiler alert, it doesn't. Nanami looks outside the window and notices the same toy train set from the first scene. She then hears a pretty creepy humming sound which draws her upstairs. She seems to be the only one who hears it and as she heads upstairs, the front door closes on its own. Yayoi finds a couple of creepy kid drawings lying around that eerily predict future events. Nanami is lured into a dark room upstairs and the light flashes, briefly revealing Toshio. Blood begins to seep from the carpet and the closet starts shaking violently. 
the door slams shut and blood flows out of the closet. And this happens. They had all that creepy buildup with the humming and the blood, only to reuse the same exact scare with Toshio that was used in the beginning of the film. It wasn't all that scary in the first place, and it's definitely not scary this time. I'm actually gonna take points away for that. Nanami escapes the room and gets laughed at by the rest of the girls before leaving the house. Nanami's story is an obvious retelling of Izumi's story from Juon the Grudge, just not as well made or impactful. The same could really be said about the entire film. The next chapter is titled Kayako, whom for years has haunted my nightmares and most of my waking moments, so I had a lot of expectations going in. Yui decides to visit the Saiki residence and check on Toshio's well-being. She sees a small arm hanging from an upstairs window and goes to ring the doorbell. After no response, she opens the door and lets herself into the house. She comes across Toshio's mother, Kayako Saeki, who gives off a very creepy and awkward vibe. Kayako says that Toshio's father took him somewhere and that he'll be home soon before she herself disappears. Yui hears the creepy humming sound and is drawn upstairs. While I may not be a big fan of a lot of the changes in this film, I think that Toshio's humming is very well done and does a good job at being completely creepy. The noise lures her to an upstairs closet that is taped completely shut. Kayako appears right behind her to let Yui know that this isn't Toshio's room and to let us know that she can be creepy too. Kayako invites her downstairs for some tea and begins humming the same tune we heard before. Yui then sees Kayako aggressively drawing into a notebook while emitting her infamous death rattle. A frightened Yui then quickly runs out of the house because aggressive arts and crafts is simply too much for her. The next chapter is titled Yayoi and starts off with arguably the scariest thing in the entire franchise. During a basketball game, Yayoi is drawn by a noise and movement coming from behind a curtain. She goes to investigate on her own and is spooked out by several creepy noises. Toshio's hands suddenly grab a hold of her leg and she retreats to the nurse's office. I don't know what was up with the sound design at this point because I was unsure if the loud noise was something Yayoi was hearing or the soundtrack trying to be edgy. She begins shivering and hops into an empty bed. She discovers one of the pictures she found in the house crumbled underneath the sheets. Something starts moving underneath the sheets and Toshio appears right in front of her. <sighs> Alright, let's keep going. Yui goes into the principal's office to tell her there was something a little off about her visit to the Saeki house. She asks to meet with the previous teacher, Mr. Konishi, but is told that he has passed away. She reads over his notes detailing that his encounters with Kayako were eerily similar. He said he would visit the house again, but that was all he wrote. While looking through the notebook, she notices the same spiral pattern drawn over and over. So, what exactly does this spiral pattern represent and why does it keep popping up? The film never explains this, but seems to be putting a heavy emphasis on it. I believe that this spiral is a visual symbolization of the curse. The Juon curse is essentially a never-ending loop of pain and and suffering. Those entangled in the curse are doomed to relive their terrible fates over and over again, as seen in previous entries of the franchise. This could be visually represented within the spiral, but this is simply my interpretation. One day in class, Yui sees Toshio sitting in his seat, scratching the spiral onto his desk. He begins humming, and Yui tells him to stop. Give the kid a break, at least he finally showed up. She grabs Toshio's arm, but it turns out he was never really there. The next chapter titled Rina shows Nanami and Aoi visiting Rina at her house. Just like Izumi, Rina has shut herself off from the world and locked herself in her room. They find a terrified Rina hiding under a desk, saying that the white child is coming. Several pieces of tape begin peeling off on their own as a ghostly hand appears out of a drawer. Toshio suddenly appears in one of the cabinets, and I'm sorry, but I almost burst out laughing 
thing at this point. The effect of the tape peeling off on its own is pretty laughable, and I just don't find what they're doing with Toshio to be scary at all. Rina says that the white child's curse will kill her, and Aoi gives her a charm necklace before she and Nanami run out of the house. Sometime later, Rina is in the kitchen and tries to pour herself some milk, which comes out as blood. She then sees Toshio clinging to her in the reflection of the blood puddle on the floor. The tea kettle on the stovetop scalds her face, which was predicted earlier in one of the pictures. The fridge opens on its own and Rina is pulled into the abyss by Toshio. To me, this scene was ineffective solely because of how over the top it was. While Toshio's reflection in the blood puddle was pretty neat, the tea kettle scalding her face and her getting yanked into the fridge was literally overkill. This was more of a Final Destination type death than a Juan one. One night, Yui's boyfriend Naoto is working hard on his movie script in their apartment. Being that he interacted with Yui who stepped into the house, he is unfortunately cursed. In a pretty effective scene, he hears what sounds like a cat struggling inside of his microwave, but thankfully finds nothing inside. While grading papers at school, a sleepy Yui finds herself drawing the spirals on the papers. In the background, her fellow teachers leave the room one by one until she is all alone in the room. She briefly dozes is off but is woken up by Toshio calling her name behind her. She then sees Kayako Saeki walking through the hallway and follows her. This type of scare scene is when Juan shines. Nothing over the top, just very atmospherically creepy and uncomfortable. She follows Kayako into a classroom and sees her journal on one of the desks. She then sits down alone in the dark classroom and casually begins reading the journal. Naoto returns home to find Yui blankly staring into the window. She doesn't respond to him and starts drawing the spiral with her finger on the window. She then passes out and he tucks her into bed. He looks into her bag and finds Kayako's diary. The diary has several entries where Kayako talks about how desperately she wants a child but cannot have one. She blames her lack of a child on her husband Takeo, who is always away on business. Each subsequent entry in her journal sounded more desperate than the last and show she was willing to do anything to have a baby. <laughs> A later entry says that while Takeo was away, a mysterious boy appeared and called her mother. Kayako says she is certain she became pregnant after that moment. We then briefly see Kayako's spirit standing directly behind him. The pages of their journal begin rapidly moving on their own as we see Kayako's eyes surrounded by spirals on one of the pages. This scene does a great job of establishing Kayako's creepy backstory by having her voice her journal entries. It's one of the more original aspects of this reboot that I really appreciated. The next chapter is titled Aoi and shows her questioning her sister Miwa about the cursed house. She knows that something is wrong with the house but refuses to share the details with her. Aoi goes to take a shower and reflects on the consequences of having entered the cursed house. She looks into the mirror and sees Toshio's hand pulling on her lower jaw. Miwa hears her screams and rushes into the bathroom. She sees blood in the sink and Aoi's torn lower jaw on the shower floor. The deaths of Yayoi, Rina, and Aoi were all predicted on the drawings presumably made by Toshio. We then see Nanami on the subway being haunted by all three of their ghosts. She tries running away and is magically teleported back inside of the cursed house. She is violently thrown around by an unknown force until she is pulled away off screen to her death. Aoi's sister then enters the house with Kayako and Takeo Saeki who are interested in renting the house. She asks Takeo if he told Kayako about the house which implies that they are not the reason that the curse was born. They are both aware of the house's past but end up renting the house anyway. The next chapter is titled Now who starts investigating the cursed house. He goes to speak with Miwa's husband, Kyosuke, to ask him about the Saeki family. He says that there is nothing wrong with the family, but that the house itself is strange. He says that a child died in the house 19 years ago, referring to the child found in the beginning of the film. He says that 10 years ago, his wife and her sister Aoi went inside the house and mysteriously passed away. This gives us a time frame between the two narratives taking place throughout the film. Naoto 
goes to a library and reads about the event that created the Juon. 19 years ago, an 8-year-old boy named Toshio Yamaga was found dead inside of the house. Toshio had been locked in the room for 7 days without food or water. He was found with his hands and feet bound inside of the upstairs closet. Naoto realizes he's doomed because he also decided to take a little peek inside of the house. He goes back to the apartment and finds Yui asleep in her bed with something moving underneath the sheets. Okay, best case scenario, it's Toshio. Worst case scenario, it's another man. He tries to wake up Yui, but she remains asleep. He compares the photo of Toshio Yamaga and Toshio Saeki and realizes they are the same person. But we all know what discovering new information gets you in a Juon film. He is killed by Kayako who twists his head completely backwards. Yui finally wakes up and finds Naoto's dead body in the living room. The final chapter titled Toshio shows Yui returning to the house hoping to find a way to end the curse. She arrives in front of the house and the front door opens on its own, almost as if taunting her. She heads to the upstairs closet and removes all the tape. They sure used a lot of tape for the making of this movie. She finds a box with a photo album containing, you guessed it, a ton of creepy photos. She finds a video camera with several home videos of the Saeki family. Kayako and Takeo initially seemed like a very happy and loving couple, especially because of newborn Toshio. However, it appears that as a child, Toshio did not like his father. <laughs> Yui finds an isolated videotape inside of an envelope which reveals how Kayako became pregnant with Toshio in the first place. Just as she described in her diary, Toshio Yomaga's spirit approached Kayako and spiritually impregnated her, revealing that Takeo wasn't Toshio's father after all. Toshio Saeki is a reincarnated version of Toshio Yamaga. We then get a pretty predictable jump scare where Toshio's face appears on the screen. Yui then sees a vision of an enraged Takeo confronting confronting Kayako about Toshio's true nature. She says that Toshio is her child and that he had nothing to do with his birth. Takeo kills Kayako by snapping her neck all in front of Toshio. He then killed Toshio's cat Mar by placing him inside of a microwave. She then sees Takeo approaching Toshio with a knife, but the vision ends before we see what happens. We don't know exactly what happened to Toshio and Takeo, but it's pretty safe to say that it wasn't a happy ending. It seems that Kayako's death created a new Juon alongside the already existing Toshio curse that started with his death 19 years ago. Being that he was probably abused throughout his whole life, Toshio may have finally found peace when Kayako became his mother. The love he received from Kayako may have quelled the curse for some time. A new curse was born when Takeo killed Kayako, and possibly the new Toshio as well. I haven't seen Juan the final curse yet, which may reveal what really happened to Toshio and Takeo. She goes back into the upstairs closet and pokes her head into the attic. She sees Kayako's dead body who has now turned into an Onryo. Kayako's Onryo begins chasing Yui in a pretty intense and scary scene. She sees Toshio at the bottom of the stairs and asks him to save her. Kayako begins crawling towards Yui in a reimagined version of the infamous Juan staircase scene. Reimagined how you ask? She's crawling up the stairs instead of down this time, which takes a whole lot more effort. While nowhere near as scary as Takako Fuji, actress Misaki Saisho does a great job in her portrayal of Kayako. She takes on a pretty difficult task of having to essentially portray three different versions of Kayako. The normal happy Kayako before moving into the house, the creepy human spirit version, and of course, the Onryo. She definitely made the character her own, and I really appreciated that. Toshio shows up and pretty much takes away the scare factor from an otherwise very solid scare scene. <laughs> That's exactly how I looked waking up from Juon nightmares for nearly 15 years of my life. Thinking that it was all just a dream, Yui walks out into the living room to look for Naoto. In the film's final scene, she encounters his silly-looking reanimated dead body emitting the death rattle as Toshio watches on the counter. Naoto's spirit approaches Yui and a single tear falls from her eye as the movie ends. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was Juon, the beginning of the end. My friends, 
I don't know if y'all could tell from this video, but I wasn't the biggest fan of this reboot. I think that it tried to do everything Juan the Grudge did, but did it worse. I appreciate the fact that they tried to somewhat change things up a bit by having Toshio become the main focus of the story, but that move ultimately did not pay off. Toshio has always been significantly less scary than Kayako, especially in this film where he doesn't really do much at all. The film had a few good scare scenes in it, but nothing that amounts to the terrifying levels of the earlier films, resulting in an average scare score of 52%. The scariest scene in the film was when Naoto was reading Kayako's diary. It was a very well-made scene that had a simple yet effective scare. Hearing Kayako's voice narrate the entries and seeing Naoto's reaction was a clever way of telling the creepy backstory and led to a great and unsettling scare. With Juan the beginning of the end out of the way, we have only one more film left to cover in the franchise. This film didn't set the bar very high, so I'll be going into the final film with pretty low expectations. But as always, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Thank you all for tuning in, and I cannot wait to see y'all right back here in the Horror Mine. Y'all stick around.